welcome to Furious Driving and today I am being bounced along in possibly the most crazy thing I've driven in a long time. This is up there with the Hustler. Yeah, I'm driving a Renault Twizy. Thank you. And if you like reviews of unusual and different vehicles then please do hit the like and subscribe buttons and join me again for future reviews as well. Hit the bell notification. Now on with the review. Proud to be sponsored by Diamond Bright, the car care products that have been keeping the Furious fleet looking their best for a long time already. To find all you need to keep your car clean and protected, follow the link below to diamondbright.co.uk. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving. And as we say at the end of every single episode, and next week something completely different, well, I'd like to think this time we've delivered. This is a 2015 Renault Twizy an electric quadricycle, which is frankly bonkers. Let's take a look around. So this is a heavy quadricycle, an electric vehicle, which is tax free, which is fantastic, but it does mean you have to have a full car license to drive it on the road and be insured like a real car as well. It's a bizarre looking thing, let's be perfectly honest. It looks kind of like a bizarre sci-fi robot insect, especially with the doors open which give it that kind of beetle about to take off appearance. The doors incidentally are an optional extra. As an additional optional extra, you can have zip on side windows as well. Without this, you are completely open to the elements. There is a seat belt, a three point harness as in a standard car, but that would still feel a little bit open for my liking. And it's quite interesting because it almost looks like a Fiat Multipla, the way that it's stepped up here with a lower section that protrudes forward and the headlamps are up in this upper bodywork section, different colour, which is the body colour to the black lower section. Uh, yeah, fascinating really. And of course, being electric, we've got the blue Renault logo, which was a thing they did for a while. The wheels being completely separate, like an old fashioned vehicle, have got their own separate mud guards, which move around with the wheel units themselves. This has also got the little optional rubber mud flaps at the bottom, which is cool. These are three stud, 13 inch alloy wheels. The owner has just changed these tires very recently and apparently only Continental will make these front wheel size tires. The rear ones are also 13 inch, but they're slightly wider. These are a 12580, those are 14580, so they are really like space saver wheels almost. When the wheels are turned, it's all completely exposed and you can see the suspension, the tie rod ends, the steering, it's all down here. And also in the front, you've got a little door, not locked, Got windscreen washer top up and you've got your three pin charger and because it is a heavy quadricycle it's basically a car but tiny and electric we've got proper lights and things now while the front of the twizzies two stage white and black makes it almost look like two vehicles stacked on top of each other the back end also looks like the front of a vehicle but like a one-eyed cycloptic cyberman coming towards you backwards truncated flat top on the roof which being a dynamic model is fake carbon fiber um, we've got another blue renault logo we've got the twizzy as a, just a sticker rather than the badge to save weight. It's rear wheel drive and it's a 13 kilowatt, 17 horsepower motor rear wheel drive. So the weight of the beast is here in the back, but that does mean it's kind of fun like a Porsche 911. Now the windscreen is not very big, but it is laminated glass and it is heated. You can see the little lines running through the glass and fascinating to certain people who might be watching this kind of video is this wiper. It's not a clever pantograph. It's just literally a sweeping wiper like that. Mm. I wonder if there are any triangles of bad luck or bad news or some other word to that effect. So access to this particular example is hindered by the fact we've got doors, which as I say, are an optional extra. About 500 quid, 475 pounds or so for a pair of doors on this thing. They are fascinating devices though. The bottom half is see-through so you can see out. It's heavily tinted glass, it's got fake carbon fiber sticky bits and no actual door handle. And it doesn't completely wrap around either. What you have to do is lean inside and pull the interior door handle, like, an, like a post-war sports car, like a TR3 or an M, old MG or something. So then that hinges up big scissor doors. And if that's not enough weatherproofing, you can get zip-in flexible windows as well to fill in the top bit. So if it's really raining hard, you can do that. Right, let's take a look at the interior as such as there is on this thing. Okay, let's climb in, which is a simple matter of stepping through. Oops, Daisy, leaning in, falling into the device. And that guy with the lawnmower starting up again. Thanks, mate. So then we can shut ourselves in by just clicking that down, hinges into place, and we are inside the Twizy. I've never sat in one of these before. This is actually genuinely rather exciting. There aren't many controls, but it does look incredibly spaceship 
It's like you're about to pilot a small pod craft out from the uh, bay doors of an intergalactic spaceship. It's absolutely fantastic. We've got our oval binnacle just here, like a pod on top with a digital readout for various things. A couple of lights, stop, go, service, no. All vital information. Then we've got our two glove boxes. This one is lockable, so you need your key to gain access to this one. Nice deep pocket. The one on the other side, has got a USB and the ODB port and 12 volt socket. So lots of useful stuff and stowage and power options down there. Then we've got our other various controls. Hazard lights speak for themselves. I do like the triangular pyramid and the bomb about to explode warning sign. Very fun. This is our transmission here. Drive, reverse, neutral, literally push button. It doesn't get any easier than that. On the right hand side of the stalk, we have got our wipers. And the left-hand side, we've got our indicators and lights. But not only that, we've also got the pedestrian warning siren. I am coming through. I'm also possibly a small robot from a 1980s TV show. And we've got the horn, horn test. <coughs> Jesus, that's poppy. That's, I think it's louder inside the vehicle than it is outside. It's terrifying. <laughs> now, with the uh, ignition on for that, we can now see our display, which tells us We've got our range showing 27 miles remaining. It's nearly at 100%. I think the battery is a couple of years old, so it's running to about 90% of its full capacity. And speed, and whether we are in neutral, reverse, or drive. And following on from the design language of that oval binnacle, we've got the oval section behind it, mirroring that shape again, looking very, very futuristic. I don't think I've got a wide enough lens to get this all in. Now, apart from the pedestrian hazard warning, this does look and feel very standard Renault to my eyes. And likewise, the uh, steering wheel, it's like a hard plastic item, which again, feels like it's straight out the Renault parts bin. Not particularly luxurious. Everything is kind of weatherproof really. So it's li more likely to be a plastic than a leather item, obviously. So it's gonna get wet. It feels like it's out of something from the van range. It does have an airbag though, incredibly. Although if there was an incident harsh enough to require an airbag, I'm not sure how much extra protection that would give to you in that scenario. It would probably be a bad situation, possibly made worse by that. This, although it looks incredibly aftermarket, is actually factory or dealer fit because this is the dynamic with all the options available. This is your parrot Bluetooth. There's a little readout screen up here. Microphones up here as well. And behind our head, we've got loudspeakers for it. Twin loudspeakers, no radio that I'm aware of, but perhaps you could Bluetooth through the parrot to play music from your phone if you wanted to. I'm told this works better than the owner's actual everyday normal car. I've been focusing on the dashboard quite a lot, but it's also incredibly interesting down beside the seat. So we've got a large sort of stowage almost area here beside the chair on the left and on the right. There's no T-shelf up on the dashboard. This is your T-shelf down here and it does usefully come with drain holes. So if you spill your tea on a sharp corner or heavy braking, it will go straight out onto the road beneath. This also doubles up as somewhere for your rear passenger's feet. As you may have noticed, there's only one seat in the front. It's actually kind of a soft plastic padded area on top of a hard plastic area. It's actually rather comfortable, believe it or not. The seat belt comes through this center section here and the whole thing does actually slide back and forth to get you your position. Being an electric, it's only a two pedal and there's a proper mechanical handbrake under here. It looks like the top of the uh, handbrake handle from a Kangoo, but it pivots in a different manner. Now, there is, incredibly, a second seat in this thing. If I move the driver's seat forward, we can try and get into the back, although I'll try and get in from the other side because that seat belt is very much in the way. I will just say it's also very much like the front seat in so much as it's padded, plasticky, waterproof, padded areas, three of them, for your bum, your back and your head, fitted into kind of hard plastic molding areas. Climb aboard. I have to say, this is not the most dignified thing in the world to be doing. Now, with the driver's seat pushed forward as far as it goes, this isn't bad. However, if I was to put the driver's seat back into my position, it would be about here. And I think I might find this a touch claustrophobic, especially once we get into traffic. So yeah, maybe I would uh, take a rain check on going for a ride in the back of a Twizy just for the time being. Right, let's get going on the Twizzy for a bit of a drive. This is genuinely bonkers. It has got the three-point harness, but it's also got an additional fourth strap that you can put over your right shoulder because not all these things have got actual doors. Close the door Lambo style, and we're in. Turn the key, dashboard comes alive, 
and you have to wait for the beep. The green go comes on, shows them an N for neutral, push D, that goes to a D on the dashboard, and brake off, and you won't let you start pulling uphill until you are accelerating and braking at the same time. So it's a two foot step away, and off we go. Wow, it's a steep hill, but it's already pretty brisk. Now, this is, um, actually been well, power tuned by the owner he's, uh, he's overclocked it effectively making it even more brisk this has got a 6.1 kilowatt battery in it the official range is 56 miles but it's only showing uh, 28 on this one at the moment <laughs> you get some looks in this thing i've got to say people notice you They're just nipping around a housing estate in this thing and it's surprising well not surprising at all it's very easy to get around because it's really nimble handling the suspension as i said the handling is go-kart like but everything is go-kart like the suspension feels like you're in a go-kart which has got literally no give in it whatsoever it's really hilarious like 25 miles an hour or even less feels like you're absolutely bombing around oh mm -hmm. it's got two-stage regen braking so on a hill like this you can brake and let it roll down the hill and it means you get power going back into the battery <laughs> another grin everyone smiles at you i don't think you could do anything wrong in a car like this because everyone thinks it's so funny right let's get a bit of a burst of acceleration oh that's 30 miles an hour in almost no time at all. Thanks to the overclocking, if you give it the full beans, it does beep at you. But it's been doing that for a couple of years now, so apparently that's not a problem. <laughs> it's brilliant. I'm glad I've got the doors, I'll be honest, because without them, you would feel incredibly exposed, like sitting inside a motorbike. It's quite interesting because they've got the big tinted plastic on the sides. It means you can see the road whizzing past you at all times. And at the front, the cowling wraps around. So you've got these big, well, I say quarter lights, but they're like a wraparound plastic thing, which continues down to the lower section at the bottom where it doesn't quite meet the door. So you've got air blowing through from all angles. And you can hear the buzzing of the motor constantly. It's so much fun. I'm now going into a 40 zone and we can do 40. We're now doing 40 miles an hour uphill, which is impressive. It's surprisingly stable considering how narrow it is. I mean, it's bouncy as anything. It's like riding a tiny, very tough trampoline in a good way, I have to say. This is one of those bonkers things I've ever been in, but I really do rather like it. Being only one seat in the middle, although it's not very wide, you've got lots of room around you, so it does feel really quite airy and nice for the front seat passenger. The back seat, I don't think I want to be in. There was actually a cargo version of this as well, believe it or not, which would be an interesting thing to load, but quite a practical thing for the city. Oh, sorry. up not quite enough pickup apparently and there is an ambulance coming behind us now although there is an official range of 56 miles most owners go by the 30 50 rule 30 miles at 50 miles an hour or 50 miles at 30 and the owner tells us that he's generally had about 40 miles of range on the thing in most circumstances oh beepy little uh, indicator noise I'm going to spin around here. <laughs> oh, it's so much fun. It's bonkers. I've said it before and I'll keep on saying it. Now, that's actually really uncomfortable, that fourth, uh, fourth strap. When this first came out, you had to rent the battery. It was £45 a month on what was already quite an expensive thing. It's about 12 grand or so for one of these in dynamic form, rising to about 17 grand in the end. 
Renault have now changed their policy, so you no longer rent the batteries from them. We have, and the owner has been able to buy it outright, so he now owns his batteries. When it goes, that's his problem. Now you may have noticed behind me, there's no rear window. Everything just wraps around in that little tailgate thing. So you've got your two little mirrors either side. They're pretty good as it goes. Don't really notice the fact there's no rear mirror, which would be blocking your view if it was there. Now I've done a few heavy starts in this thing. And being rear wheel drive, you can actually enjoy the bit of a spurt of speed and feel it getting away. It's great fun, but I've knocked 10 miles of range off during filming. And we've not been 10 miles, that's for sure. And given it's only had about 30 miles of range to start with, this will be a relatively short test drive. But this is ideal for someone who has a short daily commute. Most people only drive 5, 10, 15 miles or so to their place of work. So something that's tiny can drive into the city producing zero emissions, costing almost nothing to recharge, and it recharges in just a, like two or three hours. And, uh, and then take up a really tiny amount of parking space is brilliant for city life. Now, admittedly, I'm in the middle of nowhere here, so possibly I'm getting that wrong, but it's brilliant for all kinds of people who don't have a long commute and need to carry a lot of stuff. It's absolutely perfect. I mean, what's, what's not to love? Well, thanks for joining me in this utterly bonkers, so much fun, ridiculous robot insect test drive twizzy. If you've enjoyed this, please, as always, hit like and subscribe and join me again next time driving something completely different, although I don't think it'll be as different as this. And I love the beepy indicator. I'll tell you what, that hill just gave me three miles of range back. <laughs>